in this lecture we will be talking about the concept of site s i t e so what is site or what is site of a settlement so we will be talking about uh, this particular concept uh, in this lecture uh, now site has a very specific uh, meaning uh, in in the in settlement uh, geography and we'll try to understand that a site actually is a a piece of ground the actual piece of ground on which the settlement is built every settlement as you know the definition of settlement is a occupancy unit it occupies certain area so the actual piece of land over which the settlement is located or the area which is occupied by the settlement is called as site so uh, there are very unique characteristics of site uh, or the ground that may favor the building of a settlement so for example in case of rural settlement the question comes to our mind that who may be the first person who built a house there in that village in the past in the history so what might be the factors responsible for coming of a village or establishing ment of a village at that particular place so as a geographers we are always interested in asking such questions uh, that why a, a particular village is located where it is so what may be the reasons responsible for that so there are many qualities of site or many features of site that may encourage or that may support or promote the growth of settlement or the establishment of a settlement or there may be some negative citing factors or citing features that may not promote or may not encourage the establishment of a settlement uh so for example we usually see that villages are located uh, along a river along the river so river or the proximity of river or that exact location on the bank of a river becomes the feature of that site that favors that promotes the set, the growth of a settlement uh so there are number of factors you know that are uh, which are as i said features of site uh, so that we'll be discussing now these are called as siting factors now one of the major siting factors of settlement is a water supply because water is a basic need and therefore wherever water is available we find that the settlements have developed at such sites so and when i say water supply so i mean the water bodies the natural water bodies which are present in that location so it can be a river it can be a lake it can be spring so where water can be easily obtained now such settlement sites which are located very close to a water point or the or the water body such settlements in general are called as the wet point settlement so wet point settlement is a settlement which is located near a water body now depending upon what kind of water body it is for example if it is a lake then we call it as a lake side settlement if it is a spring we call it as a spring point settlement or a river then we say a river side settlement so all these are different expressions of a wet point settlement right and wet point settlement as i said the most at the the biggest advantage is proximity to uh, the water body now this particular image for example where you can see two rivers meeting each other and one can observe a settlement nearby right so this and, and as there are two rivers meeting each other and at that point we find a settlement such settlements are called as the confluence point settlements because two rivers are meeting each other and that point that place is called as the confluence and a settlement is located right there at the confluence so this is called as a confluence point settlement which is one of the kind of wet point settlement this is another example of a wet point settlement one actually can see 
uh, one actually can see a, a very big, large water body at the background of this photograph. And one can see a, a, a harbor here. Right. So this becomes all this is also a water body and a settlement comes around. So all these are examples of a wet point settlement. This is a lake. And you can see that on the bank of a lake, there are houses built. So this becomes a lake point settlement. Again, a kind of wet point settlement. This is a typical meander. So you can see a river taking a meander shape turn. And right and on the bank of the meander, we find that the settlement is located. So this is this can be expressed as a riverside settlement. But because river is meandering, to be specific, we call it as a meander point settlement. So wet point settlement can have multiple expressions. Another citing factor is dry land. Now, this word may be tricky. <clears throat> Here by dry land, we don't mean desert. I mean, we don't mean a land where there is no water. Dry land basically means the place or a site which is little away from a water body. Little away because some water bodies are prone to very regular flooding. So certain rivers flood every year annual flooding as we call it so if the houses are built very right at, along the bank of such river then during the floods those houses or those areas will be inundated and there will be loss of property now to avoid that loss people do not build their houses on the bank of such river which is prone to flooding but they try to find out a, a little higher land which is a drier so here the word dry means the land where there is no flooding or there is no inundation takes place during the flooding. So such land is very much preferred for the site of a settlement. So where you can find a river is close by, so water is accessible, but at the same time you are away from the area that gets flooded and therefore you can prevent the damage uh, to houses and the loss of life as well. So there are a number of, again, examples uh, and, and such settlements are called as dry point settlements. So dry point settlements are settlements that are located on the drier land. Again, I mean the land which is or a site which is little away from a flooding water body or any area of uh, inundation. So there are a number of examples. Uh, for example, it can be a levee settlement. So levy on uh, le the levy is one of the feature a geomorphological feature that you can find uh, along the uh, bank of the river, especially the river which floods annually. So the levees are built around around the river, and because levees are at are higher grounds, so houses are built on the levees so that during the flood the houses will always be above the flood level. So uh, the uh, levees of lo the Mississippi River, for example, and the entire settlements which are along the river is a very good example of a dry point settlement. Similarly, uh, uh, the settlements located at the side of valleys above the flood plains or around the foot of a prominent hill or on an island or in marshes or lakes or, or on sandy beach ridges. So such houses are examples of a wet point settlement. This is a satellite imagery of a Mississippi River. And we can very clearly observe settlements along the uh, bank of the river, especially along on the situated on the levees uh, along the bank of the river. This is another photograph that shows that where one can see, we can see the river on the foreground of this photograph and we can also see houses but we can observe that houses are not located right at the bank of the river but they are located bit at, at a higher ground so wherever rivers have developed river terraces we find that settlements choose to uh, develop on the river terraces instead of right on the bank of the river to avoid flooding Along the beaches, we also find beach ridges, the areas which are relatively higher compared to the normal sea level or let us say high tide level. 
so where so you one can be very close to the sea but at the same time not affected by the high tide water so such areas also are called as a dry point settlement similarly in areas where lot of uh, marshy land uh, is found uh, where the land is always wet and uh, during the high tide uh, or during the rainfall the land gets inundated or it gets submerged under water one cannot construct houses right on the land because it becomes wet and such lands are also uh, are kind of disease prone because of mosquitoes and all such things now therefore there is a method of building stilts so as you can see in this photograph a stilt is built and you can see a platform is created which is above the water level and then a house houses are constructed over it so these are called as stilt houses now here though the land is inundated though the land is under water or marshy land still houses can be constructed but on a platform and the advantage is especially in the tropical areas we find such houses gets an advantage because they remain cooler the floor of the house remains cooler during the summer because there is water body beneath it and in that gap through those gaps between the platform and the water level uh, we find that the wind blows and then it creates the surface of the uh, the the floor of the house it keeps it cooler so that is an advantage all these are examples of dry point settlement again i repeat dry point here means the site which is little away from the water body to avoid the impact of flooding or inundation another significant factor of siting is fertility the fertile soil because quality of soil is very important because for most of the settlements especially rural settlements we find agriculture is a major activity and therefore if the soil is fertile then agriculture can be developed so that becomes a favorable site for uh, siting a settlement so because all these are basic needs so we usually find that Uh, rural settlements are the siting factors of rural settlements are more natural which are more connected with the basic needs of food and water and shelter and therefore we find after two points which are which we talked about siting factors connected with water the next one is connected with land the the nature of land so the fertile lands are more suitable for a crop cultivation at the same time the lands which are plowable which can be which are plowed very easily so one can use agricultural tools and equipments very easily so in such kind of soils uh, we find that the settlements uh, come up or they evolve uh, however there are certain soils which are difficult to plow because of their clayey kind of a nature now in such case again we find that it may discourage the growth of a settlement similarly the sites which have an access to pastures or grasslands or arable lands lands that are uh, wet or land under irrigation or woodlands that is forested areas so these are also areas which are chosen for as the site of settlement and usually the areas which are disease prone uh, are obviously not chosen as a, for the site of a settlement so this image shows uh, a very compact village and one can also see uh, all around the greenery and the farmlands can be seen which shows that that entire area is fertile and it's an agricultural land and because food is available agriculture can be carried out in this land you can see a village has come up in that particular area so fertile land is one of the siting factors shelter is another area now your shelter means that when people require to build houses especially in case of rural settlements the material that is required to build houses should be available nearby so availability of a building material is a very important aspect or is a very important uh, siting factor of settlement so for example a forest is there look close by then one can get one can use timber from the nearby area if there are particular stones or rocks which are available that can be used so in a in a rural settlements of mountainous area hilly areas we do find lot the use of stones in building uh, in the 
house types or in case of a forested area we find the use of uh, timber in areas where a lot of grass is available so we find thatching and all such kind of methods to build houses so a lot of use of grass or dry leaves so all these are easily available material in your surrounding region that is used for the purpose of building your house so wherever such material is available we find the the uh, uh, settlement comes up there another important aspect which is related to sheltered site is all is, is all another siting factor is called a sheltered site now here sheltered site means sites that have a natural protection for example when we look at headland and bays so bay always is a, is such a site that gets protection from the sea waves because sea waves uh, uh, they when they come inside the bay or in the inner area of the bay their energy has already reduced because of the headlands that protect the bay and therefore such sites are protected sites so such sites uh, are protected uh, from uh, high high winds or the rough seas and therefore we find sites in, uh, along the estuaries or along the lagoons or along the bays are the sites where settlements develop and such sites also then later on develop as a, a port sites or a harbor sites it provides such sites provides very calm anchorage at which ships can be loaded or unloaded and repaired and watered so shelter and protected sites both are very significant uh, siting factors now this particular slide shows uh, a village in kokan and if you observe the house right in front and if you see the wall of that house then you will find that the wall is built of a very particular reddish color stone now this stone is called as the laterite now laterite is found in kokan abundantly and therefore we find that the stone or a rock which is available in the surrounding region in the nearby region itself is used as a building material so it becomes easy to build a house with a material which is available just close by uh, similarly wherever there are uh, uh, higher grounds or hills you know made up of softer material softer rocks such as sandstones so where we find that carving is very possible okay so people create caves inside and then we get something called as cave houses wherever the carving is possible softer ground softer areas are available where carving is easier so depending upon the kind of uh, material or the topographic features available we find people build their house this photo i, I mean most of you will recognize this is a photo from tundra region and what you can see those dome kind of a structures are actually the houses uh, called as igloos and these are the houses built by the eskimo community staying in tundra region so here you can find as the snow or ice blocks are available in the nearby region these ice blocks are used to construct houses so it's not necessary always one should have a forest or a stone or a rock but even in such a uh, uh, landscape like tundra we find the nearby material is used and houses are constructed so uh, like water like land the shelter the availability of a shelter material also plays a significant role in siting factors this image is one of the example of a protected site so you can see that this entire area is a bay and it is protected because of this landmass this headland it is protected from the open sea and therefore building a settlement at this point this is called as the bay point settlement then you find is becomes little easier because this particular area is protected from the sea waves or the rough sea because of its location uh, at the head of the bay so such uh, so the say the point that we are talking about sheltered site so this is one of the example of it another significant siting factor is called as aspect here aspect means the slope of the mountain the slope of the mountain that is either facing the sun so that gets a lot of sunlight 
or the that aspect of the mountain or the slope of the mountain that do not receive much sunlight so there is a difference between a slope that is receiving a lot of sunshine and another part of the slope uh, which may not be receiving abundant uh, sunshine because when uh, uh, we construct house on the slope or on an aspect which is facing the sunshine now that is always advantages especially in the temperate regions because such areas keep a uh, such uh, aspect facing the sun keep the areas warmer and therefore in the cooler areas in the cooler climatic region such a uh, uh, aspect becomes a significant site however as we know that the aspect facing the sun or uh, are different in different hemisphere for example in northern hemisphere we find the south facing slopes of the mountains are chosen because do these those these are the slopes that receive lot of sunshine while in the southern hemisphere the north facing slopes uh, are usually chosen as site of settlement because they receive a lot of sunshine so it helps to avoid the wind swept heights or also the frost hollows or areas which are prone to damp uh, dampness or unhealthy mists i mean if the slope or the aspect is not receiving abundant sunshine then such areas tend to remain very damp uh, and that may lead to uh, unhealthy conditions as far as survival is concerned obviously wherever the winds are very strong at such locations the wind breaker trees are planted to protect the strong wind so wind breaker trees are the tall trees that uh, that is uh, that which are planted right in the on the path of the wind so that whenever a very strong wind is blowing when it strikes the kind of a wall of a tall tree then it reduces the uh, the, the the intensity of the wind and as a result it may reduce the impact of it so such sites are also very significant so the site as you can see here one of the slope which is right on the foreground is receiving ample sunshine right and you can see houses which are constructed on such aspect sites i mean after once we are satisfied with basic needs like food water shelter then obviously the important thing is security security from any aggression uh, from people or from animals also and therefore defending uh, the the protecting the settlement becomes very important but there are certain sites that offer you natural defense that offer you natural protection for example hills i mean hill tops or islands surrounded by water so they automatic they provide you a natural defense or a natural protection uh, and so there are a number of sites for example in nigeria there are houses are built on incel bergs so they provide a very good defensive positions or many a times uh, hill tops are chosen as a defensive site if the hill top has a fort then the set the people choose to stay at at the foothill of such hill so that if there is any aggression people can take the shelter in such forts which are located on the hill top so it provides a lot of defense so sites where uh, monasteries or castles or palaces or forts are located are also are considered as a defensive site so island settlements fort point settlements hill top settlements are different kind of defense point settlements so as here you can see there is a higher ground and a settlement has come up on that land which is higher from the point of view of defense or protection and then you can also see that on the slopes the area is very densely vegetated so that also provides a protection to the settlement which is located at the higher ground this is a typical example of a fort point settlement so one can see a fort on the high ground and then just at the foothill one can see a village or a settlement is located so these are all examples of different sites based on defense 
Last important citing factor is resource site. Other than water, food, there are number of other requirements as far as development of economic activities are concerned. So wherever there are such uh, resources are available, it can be physical resources, it also can be cultural resources. For example, availability of minerals will promote the development of mining activities. So again, it will develop, it will encourage the development of a mining settlement or a mining town. So such areas or such sites where minerals are available or there are water bodies with fishes available, so where fishing is possible. So, or winter sports facilities are possible in certain sites. Uh, uh, so, uh, such sites are important. So, where uh, a winter, uh, the winter itself becomes a resource or the snow itself becomes a resource where certain specific kind of sports uh, uh, are arranged, which cannot be arranged in any other tropical areas. So, such areas become a uh, become a uh, one of the important resource sites. So it will such sites will develop resort towns or mining towns or fishing ports, and it will allow the early establishment of settlement and then also very fast development of such sites because they are economically more profitable sites. So mining sites which are located uh, near mineral rich areas or the coastal areas where we can find fishing is developed. So many a time the, the fishermen settlements, Kolivadas are located in such sites, which we call them as fishing villages or fishing sites or forest sites, the, the sites where which are located near a forested area. Now, all these are physical resources. So it can be a mineral or it can be fish or it can be forest. These are physical resources. But certain settlements also develop around the cultural feature. For example, temple towns or temple settlements, many of them we find in, uh, in South India, for example. So where a temple is located at the center and the entire settlement is built around it. So it can be a temple, it may be a mosque, it may be a church. So that becomes a major resource, cultural resource around which the settlement develops or there can be educational institutions around which settlement can develop so that may lead to the development of uh, education towns educational towns okay so resource sites are may not be always physical but they also can be cultural so this particular photograph where you can see a kolivada or, or the fisherman fisherman colony right in the in the front in the uh, in the photograph and this fisherman is colony is located along the sea, along the coast. So because it's a coastal area, fishing is possible. This particular settlement has come up on that area, right? So this is another example of a resource site. This is an image that shows you an example of a cultural site. So where you can find that a, a, a big a temple complex is located at the center and one can see the town uh, has developed and spread uh, all around it. So here a culture becomes or a temple becomes a resource. So these are different citing factors that we have studied in this chapter. I repeat, site is the actual piece of ground over which the settlement is built. And every site has got uh, some positive factors or negative factors that may promote the growth of a settlement or that may not promote the growth of a settlement. So as we have seen, wet point settlement, settlements located around the water body. So that's the positive feature. But in a desert-like areas where water is not available, then obviously such sites will discourage the growth of settlement or a dry land. I mean, uh, the, it is both ways. So the site which is right at the, along the bank of a river, which is flood prone, is a negative site. There the settlement ca will cannot come because of the uh, because of the, uh, the flooding and its impact. But a site which is little away from it, little bit at higher ground, maybe a river terrace. So in such sites become more favorable sites as far as settlement growth is concerned. So we find the role of dry land in such cases. The areas where a building material is available so that the shelter can be constructed or the areas which are protected from natural forces such as strong wind or 
uh, rough seas or areas of which are hilly or mountainous but which are facing the sun and receiving a lot of sunshine such areas also promote the uh, or encourage the development of uh, settlements areas that provide you natural protection or natural defense also are very po positive sites uh, for the growth of settlement and lastly we have seen resource sites where either physical resources or cultural resources the presence or availability of such physical or cultural resources promote the growth of settlement so i hope you have understood this particular uh, uh, topic on site of settlement uh, if if there is any issue you can very much get uh, you can get in touch with me thanks a lot